Hi, welcome to the Growing Gains Podcast. I'm Grace, your host, and make sure you follow our Instagram at Growing Gains Podcast uh, for any timestamps and also more information about the guest speakers. Happy listening! Okay, so welcome. Can you give an introduction of yourself? Um, hi, I'm Christian, and uh, my PG is 44, and the subjects I'm taking is biology at higher level chemistry at higher level and history at higher level and Chinese, English and MAA at standard level. Um, and my EE is on history. Do you have to take- um, hello, my name is Kaylee. Um, I've attained a PG of 45. Um, my subjects, I take four HLs, including um, English B, MAA, um, biology and chemistry. And my SL subjects are Chinese A and geography. Um, for the EE, I've chosen English B. Um, category two, I think it's two B. <laughs> I'm not sure, but yeah, English B. Hi, my name is Audrey. Um, I've also attained a PG of forty five. I take subjects of uh, HL, uh, English A literature, history and economics, and SL Chinese A language and literature. Um, chemistry and math AA. Uh, for my extended essay, I did it on Chinese A. Great, thank you all. And um, so first we'll start with um, why did you want to take IB and um, does that reason still hold true? Okay, Um, so I chose IB because of um, the local curriculum, which I didn't really like as much, including a subject called liberal studies, which was kind of like um, a weaker subject, I think, for me. So that's why I wanted to avoid it. I just chose IB instead. And for me, I think... Um, The approach of IB was more suited for my learning style, including like um, more research based and like including more um, internal assessments and assignments, which I was more um, comfortable with instead of just one off exam. So that's the main reason I chose IB. And to be honest, uh, at this point, kind of some of it is still true. Some of it is not. So um, the need to avoid LS has kind of disappeared because um, you kind of also have to um, equip yourself with those skills uh, sooner or later. So I think, um, yeah, don't choose IB because you want to avoid a subject. Just choose it because it suits you. And if you want to do it and it's interesting for you, then you should just choose IB. Um, so originally, I thought the IB would have like had a better grading system. So like I thought there is no... They won't set a curve within the school and then probably the grading system is going to be more lenient on students. Um, But then I feel like it's not really true because they do adjust the grade boundaries after you've seen like after the COVID situation, they do adjust it. So it's probably still as hard in attaining a high grade. And also a second reason is that I thought um, like for assessment, um, style, you probably could have um, distributed the risk by doing well on your internal assessments and also other graded assignments. But then um, I thought that would give me an advantage over the DSE curriculum, but I don't think it's true anymore. Um, I think it did increase my risk. So Kaylee, I want to ask, um, you just now said that it's equally hard um, getting a higher mark now, but I heard since the beginning of the COVID pandemic, people have, I mean, the IBO has been lowering grade boundaries and it has been easier. So what do you think about that? So I think that's like, it's just a one-off situation. Like certainly some cohorts got lucky and has a very lenient marking criteria, but then that's not true for every single cohort. So um, we don't know whether they're going to be lenient or more stringent on the um, whole marking thing. And it doesn't, we don't know if the next cohort, like, all we know is that the next cohort is going to be, they're going to resume to the normal criteria and grade boundaries. So then they probably won't be as lucky. So I don't think you should, I don't, I don't think this should be a the sole reason to why you should choose the IB is just because you think that the grade boundaries are going to be much lower and easier to attain. Can I elab on that? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so apart from the fact that um, a more lenient uh, mark boundary may be a one-off situation. I do think that a lot of the cohorts or the cohort that has the more lenient grade boundaries have been through the worst part of the COVID pandemic with 
um, shortened lesson hours and a shorter amount of time that would have originally been allocated to studying or teaching. So I do think that um, a le- more lenient grade boundary for them would be deserved in a way, but then it shouldn't be a, a very decisive factor, I guess, um, for the future a generation of people that would have to make the decision on whether they want to choose the IB or not. So for me, um, the reason why I decided to choose the IB was because, again, of the assessment style. I thought it suited my work ethic. The fact that there would be internal assessments that would contribute to a pretty generous portion sometimes of the um, final grades that we would get, I thought that that would give me um, th- enough motivation to work um, as well as uh, to work towards the future um, final examinations because I knew that internal assessments would count as well. And also, I thought that the IB would give me a taste of what university learning would be like, especially with the project-based learning and research-led learning and all that would give me an advantage if I started in university um, with this curriculum in my high school. Great, great. And um, so this one is going back to your subject choices. Uh, Do you regret choosing any of your subjects? And if you regretted it, which subject would you have chosen otherwise? Okay, so I think the subject choices I chose, I'm kind of satisfied with. So I wouldn't change any of the subjects I chose. Um, So I think that um, I don't regret choosing any of the subjects, but some of them are quite um, hard in the sense that there's a lot of work you have to put in in order to achieve a good grade. And obviously the work you put in is proportional to the grade you will attain. Um, So (laughs) especially true for history, I think, which I took at HL. Um, It is really quite difficult to graph the mark scheme, especially for different papers. Uh, Different examiners may have different subjective opinions in some ways because uh, it's an essay-based thing. So obviously you can't always have a uniform answer. Um, So that's kind of a subject that I found more difficult to deal with. But then in the end, I think um, it was okay. Um, For me, I felt more comfortable with my science subjects, so biology, chemistry, and math, uh, with the former two at HL, and the second one, not the second one, the last one uh, at SL. I think those were kind of more suited to um, what I was comfortable with. And for me, um, and at our school, I think, uh, one of the major decisions is choosing whether to participate in English A or B. And many people kind of wanted to choose Chinese B and English A, but then that wasn't available at our school. So I chose Chinese A and English A, and I think that kind of suited me the best. But um, honestly, it doesn't really matter if you choose English A or B. What matters is that um, you're comfortable with uh, the curriculum and you have to understand that the exam formats are vastly different and you have to choose the one that you're most comfortable with and uh, you're more confident with realistically achieving a good grade. Yes. Okay, so for me, I'm definitely satisfied with my choices. Um, At first, I was probably like really hesitant on choosing whether I should go with MAA, HL or SL. But then I think um, the choice I took was really good because um, taking MAA, HL definitely helped me with... um, with um, being more good with mathematical calculations in my other science-y subjects, such as biology and chemistry. I think it helped a lot with my chemistry HL. Um, So most of my HLs are focused on science, and that actually is linked and associated with my um, university subject choices. I knew that I wanted to take on um, STEM-related courses, and therefore I think um, it definitely helped and prepared me for university interviews and also the um, the extra reading that I'm taking on. Um, for the SL subjects, um, I think geography, some people would um, argue that it's a waste to take it at SL because um, they think that HL is uh, pretty easy to take on. I think that is probably true, but then I'm perfectly satisfied because um, with the extra time I got from the free lessons 
um, in geography classes, I can work on my biology and chemistry as well as my math. So I think it was a pretty good combination in terms of having extra time to work on subjects that are especially difficult. So on the contrary, I took a larger proportion of subjects that were more essay based, as seen for my HLs. I took English A, um, history and economics. All three of these subjects are very largely essay based. I needed to write a lot of th stuff, especially on the exams, and the subject content was also pretty heavy for my three HLs. But I don't regret my choices because I know that I'm a person that's more suited for um, humanities subjects, but the IB also requires us to do um, at least one science, so I took chemistry. Chemistry, um, to be very, very honest, I am not a very... Um, I am not a person that's very good at sciences, so chemistry was the science that I was com the most comfortable with, and I don't regret taking it at SL. The extra time that I got for... Um, uh, free lessons when um, my other classmates were doing their HL chemistry syllabus were, was spent on revising um, and more studying time. So I thought that that was a very good, um, that was a pretty appropriate choice for me. And as as for my other um, SL subjects, uh, Chinese and maths, I also don't regret taking them at SL or taking them at all. So I do think that my subject choice was the most suited for me as a person um, studying the IB curriculum. Okay, great. Um, so another thing that we can choose in the IB is what subjects we do for the EE. So, uh, so how did you figure out what to do, at least like choose the subject for EE? And while choosing the subject, did you already have a topic in mind or did the topic brainstorming come after you cho chose the subject for EE? Okay, so I think that um, I'll probably cover some of what Kaylee and Audrey will have to say, which is um, I think essay or, or humanities-based subjects have an easier EE, so-called easier, um, because when you have to deal with um, biology or chemistry EEs, you also have to put in extra um, lab hours and experiments which you'll have to not only design, but you have to like stay back at school and kind of work through it uh, during the summer. So it's much harder to allocate your time in a way that you're comfortable with. It's more like you're kind of um, adhering to the timetable of the school and the availability. So um, especially during our years, um, we had like the pandemic situation. We couldn't go back to school and do lab sessions. So it's quite hard to do like um, primary experimental based um, research and it's also quite difficult to do secondary research so that's why even though uh, I'm kind of more of a science person in the end I chose history as my EE subject because I found it the one that I was most comfortable with. Um, my EE was more focused on the holocaust but um, I think it was really hard to narrow down a subject that um, you have to talk about because um, you have to make it highly specific in the sense that, um, yeah, even though I've narrowed it down to like um, a discussion based on mainly two books uh, and I've narrowed it down to just the civilian participation of the Holocaust, it was still a lot to cover. Uh, I think the 4,000 word limit was not enough for me to talk about everything. So in the end, you, you feel that the 4,000 words is nothing. You breeze through it. Uh, and the hard part is to make sure you cover everything in the assessment criteria and um, make sure it's a subject that really interests you because you'll do countless hours of research poured into that. And you have to write in a very articulate and um, explicit way not to leave anything out. Yes. So at first, when I was told to choose my EE, um, the lab hours for my biology and chemistry EEs are, definitely put me off. I knew that it was difficult to choose a very specific topic that was at an EE level. So um, at first, I was already struggling with choosing my IA topics. Um, in order to squeeze out an EE topic, that was definitely much harder. Um, it's very difficult to distinguish whether it's good enough or difficult or specific enough for an EE. So therefore, I just focused on my... Um, geography and also my language 
subjects. Um, at the end, I chose English, is because um, in English B you can do like a var- a variety of um, topics, and I thought that the culture stuff was pretty interesting, and it was like not really um, discussed or touched upon in other subjects or even in class. And I think um, it would be like if I don't do it this time in my IBE, I will never be able to touch upon this topic anymore. So I just took the chance and um, did what I could do, and just. Since it sounded feasible, I just went with it. Um, for me, the choice I had to make was between Chinese and economics. So at first, I wanted to do an economics EE, but then I heard from some seniors that doing an econ EE would be more difficult in terms of data collection and research, and also picking an appropriate topic for a uh, EE level, and also the. Marking criteria was pretty harsh for economics, so that kind of put me off for choosing an economics EE, and and I heard then that um, did more research into Chinese A EE, and I found that doing a language based EE that way with Chinese was actually more suited for me because I did have topics I wanted to explore. I did my EE on Cantonese song lyrics. It's been a topic that fascinated me since a young age, and I wanted to do it this time because、uh, it was a chance for me to actually explore my interest in the subject and do something that I really wanted to. So、um, I don't regret choosing Chinese A, especially this topic, although it actually did. T- take me a lot of time to research and narrow down this、um, broader subject of Cantonese song lyrics into a feasible research question. And I do have to thank my supervisor for helping me and guiding me along the way. I thought my supervisor was very thoughtful and very helpful with、uh, for for me、um, during the process. So yeah. <laughs> okay. So.、Um- Also,、uh, we've been talking about research papers and IB in general. We have to do a lot of research. We have to write a lot of papers. Have you ever been intimidated by the workload, or、um, have you ever struggled to manage time? And how did you resolve these problems? Yeah, I think obviously yeah, we would do with stress. <laughs> <laughs> There's no denying that it's a heavy workload, especially.、Um, For internal deadlines, our school mainly sets them around December and January. Even though、um, some schools may set them a bit later, maybe February or even March,、um, I think that around the deadline months, you will face like lots of stress, and、um, definitely a much higher workload. You have to deal with、um, four IAs, I think, and two IOs, as well as your EE, as well as your TOK essay, which is quite a lot to do. I think time management is really an important aspect of、um, dealing with all of these problems that you encounter.、Um, for many people who might disagree with me, but、um, I the method I chose is that I started very early.、Um, I started my EE in maybe the June of the previous year. Uh, and my、um, IA is mainly around September and October.、Um, I think that <laughs> spreading out my time and kind of eliminating the time pressure was kind of key for me to、um, like submit essays with qualities that I was most satisfied with.、Um, and I felt that that way, even though there is still stress and you still have to spend lots of time working, I think、um, it alleviates. Part of your workload, but、um, really, it just suits the way you manage your time and the way that you think most efficiently allows you to、um, brainstorm ideas and write these essays to the best of your abilities. So some people may spend more times around these deadline months trying to just squeeze out maybe four a.m. days,、um, like doing your IAs, and maybe that's the best way for them. But for me, I'd like to kind of. Spread out and、um, do everything.、Um, yeah,、uh, and I'd like to. For me, I think the best way is to write a few drafts. So, if you write your first draft, just、um, if you don't know what you're doing or you don't know what to say, just write it anyways. You can write it eight thousand words, nine thousand words, and cut it down later, because、um, it's easier to cut stuff than to write stuff. So I think. Ivy is definitely hellish in terms of 
when the IA deadlines all collapse on you. So there was like a month or two where all the science IAs were due. And it was, it was such a torture. I had almost every single day me going to bed at 3 a.m. I'm definitely the midnight gang. Um, I have to say though, um, because I had difficulty choosing my IA topics, so I'm definitely not most satisfied with them. I'm not really like very interested in them, but then I still had to push through. So my compromise was that um, I compromised the quality. I definitely don't, w- wouldn't say it's my best work in my that I've written um, in my high school days. Um, but then I think for what we've done, and like the time management is a big struggle. It's a big obstacle that you have to overcome anyways. So then with such situation in front of you, you still have to do it somehow. So I just accepted the fact that um, even though I started it early and ended it up um, before the deadlines, like, like a few hours before the deadlines, <laughs> I just accepted the fact that it's probably won't it won't go any way better. So I just took it and um, accepted it. But then for the EE, I was really satisfied with because um, my supervisor was really nice. Um, my supervisor told me to start early and also gave me really constructive feedback. And I took those feedback and um, just a very good piece of advice is that if you're if your supervisor gave you really harsh comments, just take them. It's going to be super useful for you um, because what they if they see such certain flaws, I'm pretty sure the uh, markers in the IBO will probably see the same problems in your work. So it's better to change up those details earlier than um, just risking and gambling uh, to see if the examiner likes your work or not. So yeah, t- uh, suck up the harsh comments and just... Uh, start working hard. Um, so since both of them talked about the workload of internal assessments, I'm going to talk, be talking about the transition from maybe a junior form curriculum to the IB. So for um, our, our school, we had a year of pre-IB. That was a year where I struggled academically um, because it was when the transition from um, junior secondary to high school really hit me hard especially for science subjects for me because I remember struggling academically because I couldn't really pick up um, the content as quickly as I would in junior forms but it actually got resolved as we went into the IB like first year because um, the curriculum was um, structured more clearly and I had a and I also developed a better mindset to approach the subjects that are found more difficult after the year of pre-IB. So I do think that um, in terms of academic workload, apart from internal assessments, maybe the mentality going towards the IB also needs to be adjusted because it you have to be aware that it isn't going to be as easy as you think it would be, especially compared to maybe junior secondary. So I do think that it's something that we all should be aware of if you're going to take the IB. Great. Okay. And then now a question about the, I think the outcome of IB. So I know some of you are going to local universities, some overseas. Uh, There is a general uh, belief that people who do IB tend to succeed more in overseas college applications. Do you think that's true or um, what? Yeah. So what were your own experiences, I think? Okay, so for me, I think um, college applications and my IB studies are kind of independent of each other. Um, the, yeah, I think the support you'll get in IB is probably equivalent to a support you'll get in a local curriculum or A-levels or other uh, exam boards. So I think, um, yeah, it doesn't matter too much. It matters... Um, outside of the IB, what you do as well. So make sure you do some volunteering work, make sure you do something that's worthwhile and contributes to um, the subject of your interest and um, the university of your choice in some way. Yeah, I think that's the main part. Instead of focusing on um, what IB brings to you, maybe it will be in terms of like what kind of research you've done and then you can like spit out all of your IAs. But then other than that, it's not especially useful, I think. Um, Yes. Um, I think the IB really didn't help that much. So to be honest, what 
helped me the most for my college applications is the things I've done outside of school. So I've did、um, plenty of training and also extra learnings, lectures and workshops、um, in terms of like STEM related stuff outside of school in universities.、Um, that definitely helped me to gain more experience and also lab hours to prepare for how I present myself to the professors in the interviews. And I think they were pretty. Impressed by the fact that I chose to、um, reach out to the professors so as to start lab work early in high school, I think that probably is the best. Like my, that is my advantage in terms of college applications, and I don't think it's、um, limited to IB only. So if you are a very research intensive learner, I think you would be able to gain the same skills and also the same advantage as you would as. A normal IB student. I do think that the idea that、um, uh, IB gives you an advantage in, especially overseas university applications, is a myth.、Um, to debunk this myth, I I think that <laughs> what overseas universities really do look for is super curricular activities that you engage in. Like for example, you do readings outside of your school syllabus.、Um, you do. Um, extracurricular activities that pertain to the subject of your interest. I think that's the more important things that universities look for, and not the curriculum that you study.、Um, I think for the curriculum you study, they look for the good grades you have. So、um, you do have to、uh, achieve the grades that would、uh, allow you to cross their threshold in terms of their academic,、um, their requirements on academic achievements. So I think that's. The part that's true, regardless of any curriculum that you take. Great. Okay, and finally, the million-dollar question: <laughs> Is IB worth it? I think it really depends on、um, your perception or perspective on、um, what you find as a healthy learning experience.、Um, I think that for me, the IB was worth it in the end,、um, even though it was quite stressful at times and、um, it was. Hard to deal with.、Um, I think that it provided me with more opportunities and more a wider like range and diversity of、um, experience and learning outcomes than I would in a local curriculum.、Um, realistically, I think、um, A levels would be quite a nice choice as well. If like you have three subjects instead of six, maybe it would be. Uh, better for your own learning and development as well, and you have more time to do your extracurricular activities and、um, do more things related to your subject of interest. But I think in the end, the IB really allows you to、um, gain this kind of critical thinking and learning experience with lots of research, which will definitely be useful in your university. So I think that IB is worth it in the end. I do agree.、Um, I think IB is worth it、um, simply because the last time I felt like IB was a good curriculum was when the DSC exams were going、uh, was were were occurring. I felt like the peers we、uh, the peers showed a really like、um, gloomy atmosphere around them. They have this aura around them that s- s- screamed like I'm exhausted. I don't want to. Continue studying, but then for us, for our IB friends, I feel like the overall atmosphere was pretty healthy. We just worked hard, and、um, because I, I think most of us have really clear goals, and there's like much less uncertainties in terms of whether we land our college offers or not. So I feel like、um, IB definitely helped with the mentality when the public exams were ongoing. Um, but then I would say, even though I think at the end IB is worth it,、um, be prepared that the IA due dates are really hellish. So if you really don't want to work hard throughout, like constantly,、um, throughout the two years, I'd say、um, maybe gambling in the public exam, like maybe doing well for that one time, one off situation, probably might be your choice. But that's not my case. So I think for me, IB is. Pretty worth it. I concur. I think that the IB is worth it. I wouldn't have done it the another way because I can't really picture myself 
doing another curriculum as as of now. So I do think that the experience that I've gained、uh, during these two years of IB have helped me with. Maybe my college applications because I did write about、uh, what I studied in the IB and then extended off to some、um, supercurricular readings that I did、um, b- uh, due to my interest. I think that、um, the IB gave me a chance to explore my interests, even、um, in subjects that I liked, especially in history and economics. I did explore the areas of my interest in my internal assessments. I think that that's a unique. Advantage of the IB that I wouldn't get anywhere else, so I do think that the IB is worth it、uh, towards the end. Great, and any other final revision tips? Just don't procrastinate. <laughs> I say this every time, but really, don't procrastinate. The deadlines will pile up on you. It is not healthy to do five deadlines at once, really. So just don't procrastinate. Um. Very important advice is that I think hard work does pay off. So I went from a five in my maths、uh, pre IB to a seven in MA HL in my、uh, in my year one and year two. So I think、um, the hard work definitely does pay off. And don't judge yourself just because you didn't do well in your transition from junior forms to higher forms.、Um, I think、um, over time you'll definitely improve a lot much. Um, compared to what you expected yourself to do,、um, based on your PIB results. Yeah, I do think that、um, it's a good thing not to procrastinate,、um, and you have to be sure that you plan your revision very well, especially for your final exam.、Um, you can't do all of your past papers too early, or else you'll be left with. Nothing to do later on, and you can't do them too late, or else you won't have enough time to do them. So it's really important that you set out a revision plan for the month or months before、um, your final exam. And I think、um, what Kaylee said is right. So you shouldn't feel too devastated if you don't do too well in your prep year or in your first term、um, in the IB curriculum. But make sure that. You put in the effort and hard work to improve yourself and do as well as you can. Great, and also as a host and also a student of IB,、um, I would also like to add that、uh, group work is very important. I think because, for example, I take economics. There's tons of definitions that you have to memorize, and I did work with two and two or three of my friends to.、Uh, To collect all of the definitions, so we had like a really centralized information sheet, and everything was very accessible, and it made revision very、um, smooth.、Um, did you guys have any group work experiences? Yeah, yeah um, I think um, yes, that is right.、Um, How did you group revise? How about that? Yeah,、uh, for history in particular, it's quite. Even though、um, I'd say the syllabus is quite. Narrow, but it's still quite hard to kind of,、um, kind of prepare for every single possible question、uh, that we have. So I worked with a few of my classmates, and we had this kind of、um, essay bank where we basically wrote essays and sent them off to our teacher, and the teacher would give us comments, and we would、uh, improve our essays based on that. And it was quite a nice system until the exam paper came out and. It was nothing we prepared, but <laughs> I think it was okay in the end because all the exam practice that we had in doing the essays really prepared us in terms of like how to write as well as、um, how to write well in the sense that you're already prepared for、um, all of these different contents and all you have to do is string them together in a coherent way and a way that allows you to.、Um, Um, express yourself in the way that gets marks. So I think that this group experience really did help us in a sense that、um, yes, we were able to support each other and、um, improve ourselves in the process. So for geography classes,、uh, we also had like group exercises or like activities that we brainstorm the responses to like certain essay plans or. Um, to certain questions that are that appear in in the notes,、um, I think it definitely helped with、um, coming across different ways of developing ideas and how to structure your ideas in terms of forming it into an essay.、Um, it definitely helped with like 
the whole case study issue because you know geography there is a lot of case studies that you have to know and you have to memorize or like you have to prepare in order to structure a very good and strong essay that is like really sound and stuff um and i think by having group tasks it definitely helped with creating a question like a case study bank that had a, a large variety of examples that really helped with me revising it definitely shortened the amount of time that it's needed for my revision and for math i think the exploration did in terms of like group in, in groups um sometimes they're a little bit annoying i have to admit because they are very frequent and sometimes you just don't know where to start but then it's definitely better than doing it alone so i i really appreciate the style of having group work and also group activities in terms of in terms of exploration and learning and also revision in general for ib for me the central idea here is you can't do everything alone so because of the giant load of coursework that ib puts on us it's really i think it's really impossible for one to do every single bit of revision by themselves so i do appreciate the efforts of of our of our teachers to encourage us to do a uh, group revision so for me i did a uh, history and economics um group revision together with my friends i um we made um essay essay plans and uh, tables for definitions and examples together i thought that this was a very good experience because we could divide up the workloads like for example for economics we divided it um so one person for micro macro and international then it really sped up the process as we could um find the examples that we needed for our own section and then compile them together so that we would have the three sections together instead of one person doing all the work for three of them so i thought that was a very good way to revise efficiently so i do encourage people who would be doing their ib exam soon or will be taking their ib to actually do revision together great and that marks the end of our episode thank you so much for listening and see you next time bye bye bye, bye. bye.